and it, it just kind of hit me with this incredibly optimistic view that, you know, if, you know, everything works out in the end. So if you're going through a hard time right now, smile, because that means it isn't yet the end. Because things haven't worked out yet. They eventually will. It's of course that, that in-between time that sucks. Mm, tell me if this sounds familiar. Waiting is difficult. Forgetting is difficult. Not knowing which to do is kind of the worst kind of suffering. And so in the meantime it sucks because you're just sitting there waiting for things to work out. But they will. Eventually. Everything does. So, a lot of this hinges on how we understand the word can't. How we understand the word can't. So we can understand the word can't as in, we don't try. We can also understand the word can't as in, it's not possible. It's not possible. And that, if, it, if it's true, that it's not possible to come up with anything better, that's the crisis. So for example, what are some of the problems that we have? We <sighs> not Edgar's, Edgar's. That would be all right, so we have scarcity, like cancer, racism, pollution, corruption, global warming, Edgar's. I mean, I heard another one. Mm -hmm. Was it? Men. Men? God damn it. Men? Yeah. Women too. So they got Edgar twice. <laughs> That's right, women too. They just <laughs> well <men. laughs> What was this? Huh? Oh, I thought I heard something funny. Oh, I thought you said successful. Left in the room. All right, so we have all of these problems going on. What's good in the world? Nothing. <laughs> but in terms of like overall life expectancy, no, it really hasn't done much. Surgery has, but not medications. It just helps us to it helps us to numb the pain of living longer, I guess, or recognizing it. <clears throat> but this is exactly what Rutgers is talking about. Did anybody look him up by any chance? Rutgers, sorry, Rutgers is university. Uh, Bregman, Rutger Bregman. Did anybody look him up by the way? He wrote a great book. I want to say it was like 2014. It was, it's, it's called something like um, Utopia for Realists, I think it was called. And I, uh, when I read it, it just blew me away. Because typically when you read history books, this is what you see. All the terrible things about history. And this guy wrote a book, uh, an, opti uh, an intentionally optimistic view of history. And it got me thinking about it at that time. I, again, because we kind of think like when someone has, we, we see somebody who's able to identify problems, and we think, wow, they're so smart. Like we, we see like the sarcastic person, we think, wow, they're sarcastic, they're very smart. No, it's easy to find problems. It's easy to be sarcastic. It's easy to tear down. What's really hard is being able to build up. What's very difficult is, is being able to see this stuff right here. How much, of, how much good stuff is, it, is there in the world? There's a lot of good stuff. Like, when you look at all the problems in the world, scarcity, yeah, that's kind of our fault. Um, cancer, sometimes it's our fault. Racism's our fault. Pollution, corruption, global warming, partially our fault. Edgar's, right? I mean, that's us. Men and women, that's exactly us. And so, humans are kind of the, the, the cause of all of human problems, which kind of makes sense. You know, we think about what's the cause of lions' problems. A lot of times it's lions. What's the cause of chimps' problems? A lot of times it's chimps. And what's the cause of human problems? Well, it makes sense. It's humans. But we're also a species that's able to determine that. Like, like if, if you have like a, an angry chimp, what can he do? We can kill another chimp, and that's pretty much it. But if we have an angry human being, what can he do? Launch an atomic, uh, an atomic weapon if he's in the right place at the right time. And so we have the capacity, at, like, unlike any other species, to completely wipe ourselves out. And so that, in that sense, it makes us more dangerous to ourselves. To the planet? Not really. The plant's going to survive. The plant's been here for four and a half billion years, five and a half billion years. It's going to be here long after us. Maybe. 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 But being able to find some of the good things, to also keep in mind, every good thing that's been done in the history of the world has also been done by humans. Medicine, yeah. Music, you like music? Yeah. That's us. We do that. Oh, buffalo wings. That's us. Yeah, yeah. The internet, we did that. Wingstop. Yeah, Wingstop. <laughs> and, and that's the we didn't even just decide that one wing was enough. We had to have a whole bunch of different wing places. That we decided it was that good. Um, I don't know. All the good stuff that's been done. The even when you see something terrible that happened, like you see war, and we can put that into the problems. But then when you see incredible acts of compassion happen, 
That's also humans. But after reading his book, he doesn't make this point, but it got me thinking. And something just like hit me like a ton of bricks. I remember I was walking down the street, and the things that really impact your life aren't necessarily going to happen in the classroom. A lot, to, or, or, or on the job, or even in a relationship. It's the kind of stuff that you're just walking down the street on some Wednesday. And all of a sudden you stop and something just hits you, and you're like, holy crap. And one of the things that, that hit me is we complain about like corruption and you know the bad guys never win. Think about that. The bad guys never win. I mean, think about in, throughout history a time when, when the bad guys really win. I'm talking about like there were clear bad guys. You know, the bad guys never win. It, they might win in, in the in the short term. Like they might like you look at the Nazis, it's like, yeah, they're gonna win a few battles at the very beginning, but ultimately they don't end up, ever end up winning. When you look at corruption, I mean, eventually, people get found out. The good guys typically win. And, you, and you look, when you look out, and when you look throughout history, that is oftentimes the case. And I know people will say, well, that's because history is written by the winners. Yeah, but we go back and look at it afterwards. We're able to, to, to discern some things afterwards. And it, it just kind of hit me with this incredibly optimistic view that, you know, if, you know, everything works out in the end. So if you're going through a hard time right now, Smile, because that means it isn't yet the end, because things haven't worked out yet. They eventually will. It's, of course, that, that in-between time that sucks. I mean, tell me if this sounds familiar. Waiting is difficult. Forgetting is difficult. Not knowing which to do is kind of the worst kind of suffering. And so in the meantime, it sucks, because you're just sitting there waiting for things to work out. But they will, eventually. Everything does. It's that pessimistic view that says, no, they're not. Things are only going to get worse. Um, it'd be a great thing to do. If any of you guys know someone who's gone through some sort of a significant life change, like a divorce, or getting laid off, or you know, fill in the blank of whatever that tragedy would be, ask them years afterwards, um, were you better off before or after this tragedy? And, and I've, I've been doing that the past several, in fact, God, the past 10, 15 years, whenever I come across someone who underwent something years ago, and I always ask them, were you better before or after? And literally, all but one person, and I've asked this to 100 people, all but one person has said, oh, much better afterwards. At the time, it seemed like it was terrible. It seemed like it was the most tragic thing in the world. But afterwards, I kind of realized, wow, this really was for the best. You know? We had this way of, of catastrophizing things that happened. Um, scarcity. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. But like, what kind of scarcity do we have? And then, by the way, what's the solution to it? Because here's the thing, maybe it's not that we can't come up with anything better in the sense that we refuse to. Maybe what he means there is not, you know, we're just, you know, we refuse to look for solutions. Maybe it's that there isn't a better way. Maybe it's that the fact that there isn't a better way. Like we talk about, about capitalism and we complain about it. We're like, you know, capitalism, it, it creates all these, you know, uh, these, um, um, these, dis you know, these wealth disparities. Yeah, but look at the world before capitalism, look at the world after capitalism. And look at what it is that would happen to the lower class and middle class. These groups are, are way better off than ever before. Ever before. You know, and by the way, this was an interesting one that I was talking to another class, I think it was yesterday or before yesterday. Um, not my students, but someone brought up global warming. And I was asking, how, do you want, how can we solve this? Because I hope you realize that any solution that we come up to, uh, we come up with, sorry, for, for global warming or... Um, um, climate change, who's going to be affected by it? If we just all, but like for example, here in California, um, did you guys know that we banned gas-powered cars in California? Yeah. What year is it? It's 2030, I think it is. You can't sell them anymore? 2035. So, uh, anybody in here got $60,000 for a Tesla? No? Well, then guess what you're going to be doing? Walking. So, because, so we're going to save the planet by making poor people walk. If you're rich, you can afford you can afford electric cars, and though and then by the way, what's going to happen when in Calif what's going to happen to the price of electric cars in California, when yeah they, yeah they're going to go up because you don't have an alternative. Need a Tesla for thirty k. Yeah. What's that? Buy a Tesla for thirty k. For thirty k, not twenty thirty five. Think about the future. Maybe a used one or a new one. I don't know what they go for. A used or a new one. I think a new one. My brother was telling me about it. I think I'm going to get a, a test. Huh. <coughs> I, will, I will always drive Mr. Truck. Yeah. 
And so the point is that any kind of solution that we come up with, energy prices are going to go through the roof. Well, I guess that means poor people won't be able to use air conditioning, huh? But the rich people will be able to in their Teslas. So whatever kind of solution we come up with, and, and by the way, that's just in this country. Now start thinking about applying those policies around the world. Think about how many people are going to die off, how many hundreds of millions of people are going to die off. But it's not the, it's not the better people though, right? Just the poor people. Yeah. There's no solution. The, the, solutions, this, the solution might be we have the best possible system. And it's been said before that the, that the, that the, that the, what is it, the perfect is the enemy of the great, I think it is. In other words, because things aren't perfect, because they're only great, we try to tinker with things. And sometimes when we tinker with them, we make them worse. Sometimes things are the best they possibly can be. They're not perfect, but we like to remind ourselves all the time, nothing is perfect, nobody is perfect. So, but, but then we try to tinker with systems to make them perfect, and in, in so doing, a lot of times we ruin them, we destroy things. So the crisis of our times isn't that we don't have a good. We have a good. We should be able to populate this list, like, you know, for boards and boards and boards of all the good stuff that's happening in the world. Yeah, there's bad stuff, of course, and of course, but this doesn't take any kind of imagination or intelligence to identify. This, this does, and it shouldn't, by the way, because the fact that we have difficulty populating the list of what's good should tell us how good we have it. Yeah. If I walk over and flip a switch and the electricity turns on, that's pretty damn cool, man. That's like sorcery. But we take it for granted. Look what happened to us last week. We lost the Wi-Fi here, and the whole school just comes to a complete stop. The whole district comes to a complete stop because we lost Wi-Fi. I guess we can still plug in. We can still get internet. The internet worked. You know, the landline stuff worked. Not landline, sorry. The ethernet stuff still worked. That's fine. But the Wi-Fi was down, and because of that, we couldn't come out with grades, and now we have all this chaos today of teachers who don't seem to realize that, that grades were due two days ago because <laughs> we don't communicate through, through those emails. But you know, we just take for granted that that's, just, that that's how it's supposed to be. The lights are supposed to work. The internet's supposed to work. I should be able to get my cheeseburger through the drive through really, really quickly. And so then once in a while, we get home, and it's like, oh my god, I told them no onions. They put onions on it, and we're pissed about it. Think about what we're complaining about. Oh my god, they gave me too much food. <laughs> there are people around the world who would, who would be dying because, you know, like, really, they gave you too much food. <laughs> you want to send someone out my way? And I understand it's an inconvenience. I'm not saying that we should be happy with it. By the way, I'm not saying that we should be necessarily content with it either. All I'm saying is that there's so much good in the world, man. You guys ever go to the, I don't know, go to the beach sometime at night? and it's really dark, and just look at all the lights that are around you, and just think about that. All of that stuff was built by people. It was mined, it was manufactured, it was delivered, it was, in, it was designed, it was installed. All of that stuff took so many people to, to, to put together. And somehow, some way, us angry chimps are able to, to coordinate enough to build cities, and to build air conditioning, and to, I don't know, bring us peanut butter, or in steak sauce, whatever. Develop books, ranch dressing, I don't know why I keep... <coughs> It's all condiments for some reason. I think it's kind of looking steak over at my sauce. shelf. Yeah, steak sauce. And caramel. People ask me why I have steak sauce and caramel. I don't know. But when the day comes I need it, I'm going to be glad it's there. <laughs> Someday you guys be walking around campus and go like, this is, whatever I'm eating is really good, but it'd be so much better with caramel. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much good, man. And think about the kind of person you want to be. You want to be the person who's grateful for what we have. Or better yet, think about the person who other people would want to hang out with. Do you think, I mean, this person over here, think about that person who's always just folding their arms and scratching their chin and complaining about cancer and scarcity and, and pollution. You know? Are they bad? Yeah. That doesn't mean we should just accept them. But man, let's be grateful for, for how good things are. Because there's so much to be grateful for. And if you can find yourself grateful, you can find yourself on the receiving end of a much happier life. Day in and day out. Being grateful for the small things. You know, when the Wi-Fi comes on again, oh, it'll be cool. That'll be great. You know, until then, oh, well, whatever. Yeah. Right. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticism.